Hello guys, welcome back to a new tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this really cool advertisement here. You can see the shoe in the middle, uh, kind of the splatter effect in the background, and yeah, basically how to do this advertisement. I posted it on Twitter and a lot of you guys said you wanted to see it. So yeah, that's what I'm making today. So yeah, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off, we're just going to go to File, New, and uh, the dimensions we're going to be using are of 1500 by 500, but these don't really matter. Uh, you can use, you can do the, any dimensions you like. And uh, there are two colors that you guys are going to need. It's these two right here. Um, this one's going to be the background color, and then this one's going to be for highlighting and for lighting and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's really important that you take down these two because it's really like the colors do impact the design a lot. So yeah, um, it's really important to use these colors. You can change the colors afterwards to like red or uh, to a green. But yeah, for, uh, we're going to make it in these colors, and then we can change them after. Okay, so the, this is going to be the background color. So to make this color, all we need to do is um, just type in the code. So 020E14, or I could just click there. But I, just for you guys, you would need to type in that code into this little box down here. And then you would just need to use the, uh, the paint bucket tool and just fill. And yeah, that's basically how you high -end copy colors. And we can just delete that now because we're not going to be needing that color anymore okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer and we're going to make our light so we're just going to go over to our, um, our foreground color you're going to have to copy the code again uh, the code in again but i'm just going to click it just so yeah you guys are going to have to copy the code in again and uh, we're just going to use the default brush this um this soft uh, this soft brush make sure the hardness is on zero and uh, we can change the size depending on your dimensions the sizes will be different uh, but we're just going to find something that works good for us it'd be better to have too much um, involved in the middle rather than too little like this well that's probably about right but it'd be better to have a lot more in than a lot out because if it's a lot more in uh, that means we can just move up in the it's because we might need to change it in the, in the while making this design because the color correction can really affect the intensity of the light so if we do need to, to come out a bit more we can just drag it down and um, so yeah, if, if it was too far up, then you wouldn't be able to drag it down. So yeah, uh, I think this is about good. We want it the, so it kind of ends in the middle of the dimensions. That would be probably be about right. If you uh, if you did need to drag it up, then you're probably going to have to erase uh, the, the line. You probably can't see that in the video. But it does leave a bit of a line here just because um, the brush cuts off when you go off the artboard. And yeah, um, so yeah. We got the light here, we're just going to rename the layer just by double clicking on it and we just click, just type in light. And now we're just going to drag in our product. We've got a shoe here, we, you don't have to use a shoe, you could use any product really. And uh, yeah, so let's just make that a bit smaller, get it to the right size, and we're going to put it at a bit of an angle. Okay, that looks good. So now that we've done that, we're going to rasterize the layer. Is whenever you drag a picture straight into Photoshop, it always makes it a smart object. So to take to um, to make to rasterize, all you need to do is right click on the layer, go to rasterize layer, and there we go. And I'm just going to rename it to product. Okay. Now we're going to make sure it's centered. So to do that, you need to click on your background layer, and uh, just press Control T, and it will have these transform options. You can just drag it around if you wanted to, but we're not going to do that. So just press Control T. Make sure you have these rulers out. If you don't have the rulers out, just click and drag in. If you don't have the rulers, I mean, um, press Control R, and then they'll they'll have these rulers around the side. And then to hide and to show them, just press Command and colon, and yeah, that will hide and show the ruler. And so that's our middle. Uh, we can see if our product is in the middle just by pressing Control T, and then just lining it up with where it needs to be. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to make a new layer and we're going to do a bit of highlighting. So again, we're going to be using this color here and we're going to use the regular brush tool. We can use our square bracket keys just to make it a bit smaller. And we're just going to click on the shoe. We kind of want the, um, the middle, the inside of like the middle of the shoe to be a bit darker than the outside. So we're just going to click around the outside and we're just going to change the blending option to color dodge. And what that does is you can see it kind of puts the, um, the color onto the shoe and it looks really nice. But we don't want it to be too dark because that isn't what the shoe looks like because um, obviously the, the shoe was like a grey and uh, yeah this doesn't really look realistic anymore. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our product and we go to image, adjustments and brightness and we're going to turn down the brightness just a bit and there we go. It really has this really cool um, really cool um, glow effect from the, the color dodge layer that we had. By 
decreasing the brightness it might have the you kind of, you might be able to see these blues around the outside and you don't really want those uh, a little can be it can look quite nice but um, you don't want it too much so you just want to use your eraser tool and then just erase it from the highlight let's just rename this real quick uh, just for you guys just so you know what I'm doing and I'm just gonna erase just around the shoe just to get rid of this darker blue that you can see because of the color dodge you might not be able to see that in the video but um, if you're following the video and you're actually doing this in Photoshop then you probably will notice it there okay so now that we've done um, the lighting and we the, we've done our, we added our color to the shoe we're now gonna do this splatter effect I have made a whole tutorial on this so if you want to see a more in-depth tutorial on how to do the um, the splatter effect on an image like a product then I'll leave a link to that in the description okay so it's, I'm just gonna show you now but it probably won't be as in-depth so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our product and we're gonna add a mask which is this button right that, uh, down in the corner which is a rectangle with a circle in the middle and we're gonna make sure that we have we're gonna click on our mask and I'm just gonna use our eraser tool and now we're gonna use a splatter brush we're gonna you can find splatter brushes on for free on um on Google uh, so yeah just Google free splatter brushes and uh, yeah you can find all of this all this stuff um, so yeah let's just find one we like and uh, we're just gonna make it a lot smaller there we go and then we're just gonna go over the shoe like this okay that's good and now we're gonna use our regular um, eraser brush just the, the regular default one and um, we're just gonna go over just this back end just so we don't have any sticky parts sticking out and of course you'll see this um, the highlight from the color dodge just sticking out there we're gonna leave that there for now because we are still editing the shoe and uh, make, make, make sure that we are still working on our mask and we're gonna use our brush tool and we're going to use another a different brush um, yeah we'll use this one this one's fine let's make it a lot smaller and then just go over it that's a bit too much I think okay yeah that looks good that looks cool so now that we've done that, we're gonna just you see these little bits sticking out. We don't really want those, so we're just gonna erase those real quick. You could use a 100% um, uh, hardness on the brush, or yeah, but uh, we're just gonna keep it like this is fine. And yeah, we can just edit it a bit, just have some more parts sticking out more than others. And yeah, okay, that looks good. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to add uh, some kind of paint splatters in the background. So it's, you might not notice it, uh, but there are these kind of uh, splats in the background. You might think it's part of the shoe, but yeah, I'm, I just kind of separated it out. Uh, so yeah, what we're gonna do is gonna make a new layer. We're gonna rename it to paint splats, and um, still using the same color. And we're gonna go to our brush tool, and then we are going to select our brush that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using our paint batter brush, and just click on this icon up here that has the three paint brushes. And then you're going to tick shape dynamics, and then you want to change the angle. Jitter. What this does is, whenever you click, it changes the angle, so you can see it looks different in each in each time I clicked. So it's going to get rid of those, and uh, we're just going to put those behind the shoe. So it's going to click, and yeah, that looks really cool. Okay, so yeah, we've got that. We've got those paint brush, um, those paint splatters in the background. Can erase some if it's going a bit, uh, going out a bit too far. And yeah, that'll look good. And I kind of want a bit more of the um, of the Nike tick of the logo. So we're just gonna bring back a bit more of the shoe. I think. So I just I just realised that. Okay, so let's just get this back. And we're gonna raise a bit more. Alright, okay, I think that looks good. We're going to keep it like that. And now we're going to add a bit more paint splatters in the background. Okay, that looks good. So now we've done that, we're now going to work on the color correction. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some brightness first. So we're going to increase the brightness. Uh, of course, if you're using uh, different colors, then um, this would be different for you. But um, if you're using the same colors as me, this should be pretty much the same, pretty similar. And um, so you can just copy the digits that I'm using if you want okay so 
Okay, I think that looks pretty cool. We're using 25 for brightness and 72 for the contrast. And like I said before, we might need we might need to move our light down a bit, so we might just want to drag it down just a bit. And yeah, just so it reaches the shoe. And uh, now what we're going to add is a curve. So just going to click on the curves and just want to go to just want to click on normal where it has the blending options, and we're going to go to luminosity down the bottom there, and we're just going to drag at the top there. Um, just to decrease that a bit and then we're going to keep this level there. If you don't have these adjustments tab if you don't have this adjustments tab open, you need to go to window and adjustments and then it will just open like that. Okay. So now we've got that, we've got the curves and we've got the brightness. We're going to add a vibrance. We're just going to make that all the way to 100 and you you don't really notice the difference, but um, it does have um, an effect on the shoe and you'll probably see that when you are editing it for yourself. And now we're going to go to exposure and we're going to increase the exposure and okay that is good and then we'll increase the gamma correction as well okay let's increase the exposure a bit more okay and now we're going to make the light go up a bit like i said we do we probably will edit the light a lot of times during the video just because uh, the color correction really does affect the lights and yeah, so um, so now we've done that, we think I'm going to move the, the shoe up a bit more uh, just by selecting the layers and just using our move tool. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we are going to add a Gaussian blur to the light because you can see these, um, this gradient banding and the Gaussian blur can help with that and um, it also makes the light spread out more so it covers more distance. So we're just going to click on our light layer, go to filter, blur and then Gaussian blur and then yeah, that looks good, we're using about Obviously, if you have different dimensions, these uh, the radius will be different for you. But um, we're using about 170 pixels for our gradient, and now we're going to add noise because that also helps with the um, the gradient banding. So what you want to do is click on, still clicking on our light, go to filter, and then um, noise, and then add noise, and make sure the amount is on one, the distribution is on uniform, and then we have monochromatic ticked. Okay, and press OK there. And there we go, we have this really cool um, gradient in the background, well this light, but, and it doesn't have any gradient banding. Obviously the compression of the video might show some, but when you're doing this for yourself you'll see that there isn't any gradient banding whatsoever. Okay, so now we've done that, we're now going to add our text. So let's just type in um, Nike, like that. We might need to change the colour because of the colour correction, uh, it doesn't make it so it's kind of different to this, so we might need to change the colour. Uh, just so it matches and it looks nice. Uh, find a nice color. Okay, that looks cool. So we're gonna have Nike there, like that. And it's gonna make just by holding Alt and dragging down, you're duplicating the layer. And just gonna make this a bit smaller. And we're gonna have the name of the shoe here, and we'll call it. It's called um, Dual Fusion, I think. So we'll have that, and because we're adding this box effect onto the text, onto this, um, onto the, onto the fusion part, we're going to make it a different layer, and call it fusion like that. Anyway, and we're going to drag this to the side. So now we can edit it. We're going to use our rectangle tool, and we're just going to click just so it covers the whole word, and just like that. And again, we will need to change the, the color of the box just because of the color correction. So we're just going to get our code from the text just by clicking on any of the text, just highlighting it, go to your box up here, and then just copy this code just by pressing Command C. And then we can double click on this rectangle thumbnail, and that allows us to change the color, and we can just paste the color in there. And then the color of the box will now be the same color as the Nike text. Okay, so now we've done that, we're going to rasterize the box. And we're gonna select. We're gonna select the the fusion words just by holding Command and then clicking on the thumbnail of the fusion text, and then uh, you just wanna delete it from the rectangle. And there you go. It kind of just makes this really cool effect, um, like we had on the example. And now we're just gonna drag this down. Make sure it's the same size as the dual word. Like that. That looks good. And then we're gonna move. We can actually delete this fusion layer now because we're not gonna be using that anymore. And we're just gonna move this tool over like that. And then we're gonna make sure it's all centered. Okay. 
So that looks cool now. Uh, we're gonna press Command T, and then we're gonna go to we're gonna right click and press Q, and this allows us to kind of um, change the top without changing the bottom. Just kind of just so it has like kind of like a movement effect. You can kind of get that effect from it. And uh, yeah, that looks cool. We only we only made that effect just because of the name of the shoe. It's called Fusion, and that effect kind of works with the um, with what we're with what we're doing. And yeah, so I think we're gonna make a few changes to the um, the color correction, just to make it look a bit better. Of course, obviously you can um, you can follow you can copy these digits as well. Uh, you will need to move. You will need to change around uh, the color correction um, sometimes with all your designs, really, because sometimes when you're working with something, it can change later, and then it doesn't look as good. Okay, so there we go. We have this text there, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a gradient to the text, and the, um, obviously the Nike um, text there as well. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna select all of our layers, so all of our text layers. Uh, we're gonna press Control J and Control E. And what that does is we duplicated them and then we merged them. So now we can edit them all as one, and we're just gonna add a gradient. Make sure that the blend mode is on multiply, and then we can just decrease the opacity down to about thirty. Okay, so now we've got that, we're going to add some more color correction. So we're going to go to our curves and we're just going to click uh, and drag downwards near the bottom of the curve. And then we're going to drag up near the top. And let's just change this a bit just so we get this nice effect. Okay, so we didn't actually need to do anything in the, in the bottom. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, that adds this cool, really, um, adds this cool highlight effect to it. And now if we want to change the color of the advertisement, like I said earlier, we're just going to go to hue and saturation at the top and uh, we can change the color. Obviously some colors don't work really well because of the colors we've been working with. But yeah, you can see this lime green works really well. And um, yeah, you can, and then you can see some like, some blues they can mess up and you can see some purples they mess up as well. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this tutorial. I appreciate you guys watching the video. And um, yeah, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video.